Live from the Acres Broadcast Center inside East Stadium, this is the Husker Athletic Director Show with Trev Alberts. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Second and goal from the seven-yard line. Heinrich, long count, turns, gives it off to Gabe Irvin, left side. Gabe stiff arms a man, is in the end zone for a touchdown off the left end. Good. <laughs> it's a gold star stiff arm by 22 to 5 Pater. And the White extends their lead to 12 0. Sims by himself in the shotgun. Jeff gets the snap. Got a quarterback draw, runs to the five and gets stood up and breaks oh, a tackle exactly. into the end zone for a touchdown. There's the length and strength of Jeff Sims breaking a tackle. The two shedding those defenders and finding Pater. Here's the 3 2 pitch. Fisher turns on one to deep right field. That's it well. Jarvis turns and watches that one go over the bullpen in right field. Charlie Fisher's second home run of the weekend. And that gives Nebraska a new program record for home runs in a regular season. Charlie Fisher tied it up on Thursday, gets the record here on a Saturday, and it ties the game up here in the fourth inning. Here is your host, Greg Sharp, on the Huskers Radio Network. Thank you. Welcome to our Monday edition of Sports Sunday. What a treat. Right out of the gate, our monthly sit-down with Athletics Director Trev Alberts. So we're going to talk to the Husker AD for the next hour. If you want to be a part of the program with a call or a text, 402-413-2400. It's a little quiet around here. Not many students on campus today. We're in a little bit of a break here. How about that? <laughs> Yeah, not bad, uh, but we uh, we had a lot of noise over this past weekend with uh, some graduation and, uh, you know, just so proud of our student athletes and uh, uh, so proud of Dennis LeBlanc and Keith Zimmer and their staffs and people work so hard to support these young men and young women. So getting to celebrate with, remember, the real reason these young people are here is to get their college education from a world-class institution like the University of Nebraska. So quiet right now, uh, but this past weekend was pretty special for us. Pretty big crowd here at the stadium on yeah. Saturday. Beautiful weather, and I think you had close to 70 athletes get get their diplomas. That's fantastic. Yeah, we had 68, okay. and uh, had a chance. Uh, a lot of parents came in, so we always do. You know, outside of the typical university stuff, we have a little banquet for them with their parents and family. And and West Stadium third floor was literally packed. And so, you know, we take great pride at the University of Nebraska of being a real leader in terms of what we support these young men and young women and. We make a commitment to them, not just the four or five years they're here, Greg. Um, these young men and young women are Huskers for life. And so postgraduate scholarships and network and those types of things, our support for student athletes does not end the day that their eligibility expires. Um, they're Huskers for life, and we're here to support them and help them. They're part of our family, and we're going to treat them as such. Well, and a prime example of that, you had a former football player, Seathan Carter, who's yeah. been in the NFL for five, six, seven years. He just got his diploma. That's great. You know, it was really cool. And it was pretty cool to see him and his family. And um, you can tell when it's extra special because we, we, we literally announce every name. And uh, the family hoots and hollers. And we encourage them to have some fun. <laughs> and so I think it's really um, symbolic of the kind of care and love that, that our academic support staff has for these young people to stay on. You know, getting your college degree is a really big deal. And by the way, there's some other former Huskers that don't have a college degree that are very successful that we're pushing to come back because getting your college degree from a place like Nebraska is uh, one of the coolest things you'll ever accomplish. Well, it's, it's so, it's, uh, those stories happen about every May. We get one of those former student athletes that yeah. comes back. And again, it speaks to Dennis and Keith, who've been here a long time. They've seen a lot of these athletes make their way through. How big of an impact does that department have when you're recruiting student athletes for football, all sports, really? Do they, do they make their way and go meet with Dennis and Keith? Oh, 100%. I mean, I, I can tell you that uh, I became a, a Nebraska Cornhusker because of that commitment, uh, because Coach Osborne laid out for us a vision about how he was going to support us, not just as football players, but try to develop us as people. And uh, that was really important to me and my family. So I, I know that, that Dennis and his entire staff, Keith Zimmer, uh, that's a really big deal. And it's important that parents get here uh, because when the parents see it and feel it, that's what makes the difference. And it really has helped all of our coaches acquire and retain some of the top talent in the country. Very good. Um, also, this past weekend, you, you had graduation come through, and you're kind of wrapping up some of the spring sports. I want to start with track and field team the men ran away with a big 10 championship that was pretty satisfying you know doesn't that feel good you know i mean at the end of the day we always talk about this but you know we're, we're in the competition business and uh, if you sign up for this um 
you know, that, that's sort of the, the, the Nebraska culture that, uh, that I grew up in that we're really working hard at. Like, we're trying to win at everything, Greg. Like, there's no reason why we can't win Big Ten championships. There, there's no reason why. We've got a 95% graduation success rate. We're, we're tied for number two of public universities in the country. We have a cumulative GPA of 3.3. .3. Now, there's a lot of focus and effort. There's coaches who decide to recruit top quality people. There's families. There's coaches. There's staff here. But at the end of the day, it comes down to, you know, we're attempting to win. And to see Justin St. Clair, young coach, named coach of the year, the kind of impact, not just, and I know Justin would say it's the entire coaching staff, but I'm really, really proud of that track and field program. And I think they're sort of endemic of the type of success that uh, broad-based success that the University of Nebraska can and should be having on a consistent basis. Women finished third at the Big Tens. They're both ranked in the, in the men, I think, are sixth in the country. The women are like 11th. Those are the kind of things you want all your programs to get to. Well, that, that's right, and uh, that's what we should aspire to be. There's, there's you know, uh, high expectations here. Um, we try to make sure that our coaches have the kind of resources, facilities, and but at the end of the day, it comes down to people. It comes down to focus, culture, and effort, and uh, we'll do the best that we can administratively to support that, but uh, just really pleased with, with our head coaches and uh, all the hard work that they're doing. Um, again, as I stood up there in front of those graduates, the type of young men and young women that our coaches are bringing to this community is really elite, and it's kind of fun to see them. Uh, and, you know, generally, uh, I've found that the quality of the individual ultimately will lead to that type of success on the field and track and in the pool. And uh, just so proud of our coaches and, and the, you know, what they stand for and uh, the kind of culture that they bring to Husker Athletics every day. And on the softball diamond, team went to Stillwater, competed really well. Unfortunately, the season came to an end, but that was a nice, made the, made the NCAA tournament for back-to-back -back years. Well, they cost me some sleep. Uh, let's be honest, Greg. And, oh, that uh, was thrilling. That, that, that <laughs> well, Saturday uh, night was thrilling. But, but you know that, I just watching that softball team, and you know the, the reality is this, and of course Rhonda's never going to say this, but you know, we've had some injuries there, and it just was really difficult because, as you know, in softball, pitching is everything, and we had great pitching, but we had some early season injuries, and and that impacted us. But to me, that softball program sort of signified a lot of what we talk about here all the time, right? We talk about never giving up hard work, grit, teamwork, and you know, just to see Coach Ravel, she's been at this a long time, and just sort of at the pinnacle of her leadership journey and the kind of influence she's having on the softball program, uh, was just sort of in awe of watching those young women and really, really happy for them. Baseball's headed to the Big Ten Tournament just up the road in Omaha. It's going to be a fun week, right? It's going to be a great week, and you know, we'll... Uh, uh, I think uh, I think it's okay if I say this. He probably won't. Uh, but you know, it's not how you start; it's how you finish. And you watch our baseball team and earn the fourth seed. There's there's absolutely no reason. There's nothing standing in the way that you know we get some timely hitting and some good pitching. Uh, we can certainly compete in the Big Ten championships. It's in Omaha, and so we would just really encourage Husker fans to come out and support Will and team. And and um, you know, the bats came alive a little bit there. And uh, so we'll we'll look forward to a, a fun Big Ten tournament. All right, uh, let's turn to our attention to football. We, we've got an announcement that came out this afternoon about a three-game uh, mini plan through these gates. Mini plan for the upcoming football season. A three-game package goes on sale tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., either by going to the box office, making the phone call, or going to huskers.com slash tickets. But you can get a ticket to a not the two non-conference home games and then pick a conference game. Here's a good chance to get some, some folks into the stadium for the 100th anniversary. Yeah, I'm, I'm just really uh, I'm grateful for the hard work of our ticketing office. Um, you know, all the folks on the external side work really hard, and uh, so putting this together. I've also been really pleased, Greg, with the feedback from Husker fans. You know, I think last year we had about 1,200 unique and new season ticket holders, and this year, we're just under 2,600 new season ticket holders. So I Great. think that's been really, really positive. Um, so finding new and creative ways, like you said, to get fans exposed to Husker football is really important. You know, um, you, a lot of people know a little bit about the East Balcony and how we've transitioned that into to club seats. So we had about 30, almost 3,200 um, possible club seats in there. And those have transitioned very well. Um, there's about 400 left or so, so we've got some additional that we can sell. Right now, you're not going to see that on the seat yourself because we have to get through a few more processes. But there's going to be good seats available within Memorial Stadium to see Coach Rule's first season uh, at varying price points. But uh, just really grateful for Husker Nation and how they've responded, and the demand's been good. 
and uh, we'll continue to try to serve them at a high level. This, you kind of answered Art in Los Angeles who texts in and he says, are you concerned at all about the sellout record? Also, with the changes to the stadium, does that change the capacity of Memorial Stadium? Yeah, as of, as of right now, you know, when we transitioned that east balcony, there was some contraction because once you put chair backs, it takes physically more space. And so there's some of that. But, but by and large, you know, the supply demand issue really isn't being addressed yet. That's part of our larger modernization plan that we're looking at as we rethink Memorial Stadium. We'll, uh, we've continued to work really hard with our executive team, and, and uh, we've talked about that a little bit. But here by the end of the summer or early fall, we hope to have our report that we can send back to President Carter and the Board of Regents on a recommendation about how we move forward uh, within Memorial Stadium. As you mentioned, a hundred year old stadium, wow. iconic structure. Our job is to ensure that we have a sound business strategy moving forward for the next 25 to 50 years. But, but right now, um, while there are some slight variations, and our team continues to go out and take a look at, you know, um, how can we widen some of the seats to create some immediate comfort. Uh, so there's a little bit of reduction in overall capacity, but, but by and large, that's um, not affected uh, significantly at this time. Mentioned right off the top that the semester ended. It's quiet on campus. A lot of the athletes have headed home for a little while. That football team will be back soon, I'm sure, to start summer conditioning. What about the coaches? What have they been up to since we last talked right at the end of spring football? Well, they continue to work really hard. You know, um, I think this is the type of year that... Uh, time of year that you encourage the coaches a little bit to spend time with their family you know I mean it's really really important I think sometimes we um, sort of forget that you know all of these football coaches basketball they're all people too they have families and um, I'll tell you the best football coach is is a happy football coach with a with a solid family right and uh, so we encourage some of that but you know you're never done recruiting um, you're never done hosting potential walk-ons others transfer portal there's constant work in that uh, regard so um, still very very busy um, and uh, working really hard quick update for us on the go big project I know it's still they're starting to put some glass on the exterior today I know the big goal is to get football in there before they open the camp correct yeah still uh, still on that plan working hard there's various areas within there and so while not going through every one of those specific areas but um, there will be several different areas within the Go Big that will be ready for occup you know, to, to be occupied at various times. But football specifically, you know, prior to camp, we need to make sure that there's as least amount of disruption as possible. And just really grateful to our coaches and everybody surrounding football. You know, this is we're all learning together. Uh, I wasn't here when the Go Big project was established. Obviously, Coach Rule wasn't the coach, and so. They've been very patient with us, but there's a collective and sincere, sincere effort to do everything we can to make sure that football is not negatively disrupted. And, uh, you know, our general contractor and houseman and, and our architects, everybody's working really hard. It's a, it's a complicated project, as you know, and so you're also transitioning significant amount of square footage within the stadium over to the Go Big project. So I, I will say this, though, you know, uh, and I'm, I'm getting off a little bit here, Greg, but you really think about the future of our football program, and not just you know because of the go big. You think about the changes that are happening in, in college athletics, right, and the NIL and all those types of things. I, 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 every day I, I pinch myself a little bit thinking about the timing of getting this approved and done. I, I really think strategically long term, Nebraska's in a great position because I'm not sure how many other universities are going to build a 315,000 square feet facility, not just for football, but all student athletes in this new economic reality that we're all facing. So we get through this. I think we have this incredible opportunity to have a world-class brick and mortar development facility. We've got the right people now, because people are really what matters, um, and right coaching. With our fan base, um, I I'm not sure who will have it better. And so just really grateful for all of our donors who've contributed to that because uh, I'm a product of development. This place and the DNA of Nebraska athletics has always been development. And so having uh, the brick and mortar behind that is going to be a game changer for us. You've got to be excited. We've been watching this for two years go up. <laughs> you just probably can't wait to bust the door open and walk in there. Well, I, I, you know, I am because, I, you know, it's, it's easy to say this, but it's absolutely true. Fil facilities inspire. I mean, you know, the reality is you walk people through there. We've walked prospective student athletes and their parents. And, you know, I know it's not all about this, but, but, but it's pretty easy to see that this place has a standard 
and this place has made a commitment. And so it's one thing to talk about, we care about developing young people. It's one thing to actually have a facility that says, here's how much we care about that. Here's how much we believe in that. And uh, so I, I um, you know, but we can't do these things if we don't have donors uh, that buy into it, and we're just grateful for the support that we consistently get. Bill in Portland says, Trev, do you ever see a time in the future when Memorial Stadium will go to natural grass? I understand they're moving the two outdoor practice fields over to grass. Well, you know, it's a conversation that, um, you know, that, that I've thought about, and uh, I've actually had a conversation with Coach Rule about, uh, you know, for obvious reasons, um, you know, in, in our climate, uh, field turf has made an awful lot of sense. The reality as well is that, you know, science continues to change or continues to be um, more new and evolving opportunities. We'll, we'll just have to see how it goes. And, and Coach Rule, one of the things I love about him is, is, is you know, he doesn't, it's not just to talk, like Coach Rule significantly is interested and cares about the health, safety, and well-being of our football team. And, and he believes strongly that spending more time on natural surface is better for the players. And um, so we're making that investment um, to, you know, on those practice fields because we, we, we believe that that's what serves our student athletes and we believe that it helps in recovery. So these are student athlete centered decisions, but there's a lot of nuance. There's a lot to think about, right? We just held a graduation out. It's a lot different if it's a natural surface. We're going to be, we're, you know, Memorial Stadium as it continues to evolve will be used in more and evolving ways. We'll, we'll see where it goes. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll have to, um, I loved playing on the grass. Um, I believe football, you, you, your jersey ought to be dirty. I mean, it's great when it's muddy and messy. It feels like a football game. But um, we'll, we'll see where it goes. Okay, very good. 402-413-2400. That's the number to fire off a text or a call. We've got about 40 minutes left with Trev here on his last show of this academic school year. We're going to take a few months off. So this is your last chance to get after him for a little while here on the program. Our Sports Highly Hotline is brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com. Anytime they've got 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned, and you can always find what you are looking for with Woodhouse. More with Trav coming up. A DUI is everything you didn't prepare for. You did not save for it. You did not train for it. You did not go to school for it. You did not raise your family or buy a house or get a job for it. It is not your life goal or a dream come true. You have planned for everything in your life. You did not plan for a DUI. Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. In America, the future belongs to everyone. That's why we make trucks like Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight and counting. Made for performance and capability. Made to play hard and work smart, on and off-road. That's because they're built Ford tough. So be future ready with Ford F-Series, based on 1977 to 2022 calendar year total sales. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890Nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student-athletes. That's 1890Nebraska.com. This year, we considered hiring an ad agency to help with our marketing. They pitched impressive visuals and a script that was inspiring. And exotic animal mascots to help grab your attention. In the end, we just decided to tell it to you straight. Shelter Insurance has award-winning customer service at affordable rates. Plus, 
Our local agents are there to help you understand what coverage you need. See shelter agent Sharon Lear in Papillion, Paul Hoos in Grand Island, or an Ord C agent Matt Woodward. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm broadcasting student Ann Gallagher with Campus News. The only designated R1 Research University in Nebraska, UNL's innovations power economic growth, precision ag production, tech breakthroughs, and future leaders in Nebraska. With the highest graduation rates and highest median earnings for recent grads of any public university in Nebraska, UNL is doing big things for our state. Woodhouse Ford is making car buying better with three convenient locations in Blair, Omaha, and Plattsmouth. A streamlined process and great offers going on now. Save up to $9,000 off MSRP on a new 2023 F-150 XLT Super Crew. Shop all of our inventory and savings now at WoodhouseFord.com. With approved credit, see dealer for details. Expires 531-2023. Here's an easy pill to swallow. Right now, earn a five cent fuel saver on every prescription you fill at your Hy-Vee Pharmacy. That's five cents off per gallon of gas for each prescription filled at Hy-Vee. Hy-Vee makes it easy to fill your prescriptions. Just call or stop by your local Hy-Vee Pharmacy and let us handle the rest. You can also fill online or use the mobile app. Fill a prescription and start earning today. Some restrictions apply. See your pharmacy or hyvee.com for details. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card. Free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at FNBO.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Back at Sonner Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. It's our final athletic director show for this school year. We'll be back up in August and running when the uh, new school year gets going. 402-413-2400, the number if you want to be a part of the show with a call or a text. Volleyball Day in Nebraska. Well, we hear about it every day. I'm sure you are. What's the latest? Where do things stand? Well, we're pretty excited about it. And again, just, um, I mean, we keep pinching ourselves going, are you kidding me? Like, uh, but we're, we're, we're still working through a few things. But we actually think, Greg, that the, the final total capacity is going to be at 91,000. So okay. obviously we're, we had to work with a fire marshal on some standing room only. Um, we're hoping that I think on June 5th we would like to have some additional solid information Hoping by June 5th we can announce who the artist will be uh, in terms of the concert. Uh, but with all those approvals, if we can get to 91,000, we think the all-time record for a women's sporting event in the United States is, is at risk. Wow. And um, we'll have an opportunity here with our volleyball program to break that. So we, there's a lot of other details we need to communicate out. Obviously, we're working with our campus a little bit. We're hoping that... As you can imagine, you try to bring 91,000 people here in the middle of the week when you think about parking and those types of things. So there's processes to go through. There will be some policies that we'll have to look at. We've had some great uh, uh, conversations and collaboration with our, with our campus partners and with the rest of the folks that are competing alongside with us, but hoping to have some more of those additional details. But uh, I think we're going to end up with total capacity at 91,000. Wow. Marvin Omaha did have that question. What about parking on that day? She can't wait to get here. She's a little worried. So details are still to come. Yeah, and, and you know, I mean, the, the, these, you know, the one thing I'm, I'm going to ask our fans, and, um, you know, I went through this a little bit back at, at UNO. We, we build an arena. And um, what's interesting is if, 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 if you're coming to a hockey game there, everybody kind of knows how to navigate. They've been there multiple times. Well, then President Obama came and spoke at Baxter Arena. The reality is we had 8,300 people who had never been to Baxter Arena before, and it was total chaos. I don't think it's going to be the same thing here, Greg. The reality is we're going to have fans, and this is going to sound weird to some, we will have people coming to Memorial Stadium who don't come here very often or who haven't been here. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to ask our fans, uh, this blew up a little bit in a true Nebraska way. We would ask for a little grace and a little mercy, remembering, too, <laughs> 
Our community is going through a whole lot of construction that's happening around downtown, the yeah. Haymarket. So we're going to work really hard on it. We've got some realities on our campus that are going to be challenging. It's a whole lot more difficult than a typical Saturday uh, football game. But because of the realities of scheduling and when football is on the road, we're really limited in terms of when we could do this. And uh, this is a great problem to have. I'm not complaining. Uh, but if you had 25,000 people, that's a little different than 91. So our campus is aware. We're going to try to find a way to alleviate some of the pain points. But I, I would tell you that the reality is, is this is going to be logistically a bit of a challenge for all of us. And we're going to have to be adults and work together on solutions. You, you talked about demand for volleyball. You're even, I think, adding seats at Devaney. For the for the regular season. Yeah, you know, I, I asked our team. Listen, we 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 have such a waiting list for tickets at volleyball, and I, I got to be very clear about this. I, I don't want to get too many people excited, but we think we've found an, an additional 400 seats that we can add wow. uh, to Devaney. But I, I think I also have to be fair, and we've got a pretty extensive waiting list. So I'm not sure we're going to have a, a bunch of new availability for the general public to buy tickets. But uh, trying to find an additional 400 seats to get as many people. Uh, in front of our volleyball program as we can. Okay, very. Irvin Scotter wants to know, are there plans for the football staff to go out and travel around the state to be introduced to the public? You know, that's a really good question. And, um, you know, we, we're, we're trying to rethink everything that we're doing here, whether it's through development, how we're engaging with our fans uh, and with our donors. I mean, I know that we've had some things that we've done historically. Um, I know that Coach Rule has some different ideas about that as well. but. Uh, I think first and foremost that you've seen that this is a staff that very much wants to engage uh, with our fan base. So, so we'll look for those areas. Um, you know, there's also a transitionary time. You know, you know, Coach Rule is is uh, uh, we we need to give him and the staff a little bit of space as well, especially when they're turning over a roster, trying to create a new offense and defense. We need to let them breathe a little bit as well. But but we'll do our very best to have our coaches accessible and out in the community. Very good. Uh, James in Omaha says, are there any talks from the competition committee, which I think you've been part of, haven't you, for the NCAA, about changing the targeting calls to a system like basketball uses with a flagrant one or flagrant two? You know, that, that topic has come up, um, but I think there's some hesitancy uh, around it. The reality is, while we, from time to time, um, see some calls that we clearly think uh, are lacking consistency, I think at the end, of the day if you separate out the competitive piece the health and safety of the players clearly um, is better under this and we've made an impact uh, and i think slowly the numbers are coming down in terms of the, the number of fouls so um, we continue to look work on that with the rules committee um, but at this point um, there doesn't seem to be a strong um, appetite to go that to go that route the clock rules will be i think a noticeable change to people when we get the games in the fall yeah, and, you know, I mean, there, there's a couple things. I think a lot of people think that, well, we're just, you know, the games are getting away from us. They're getting too long. And what can we do to speed up the game? Well, I think, you know, there are certain windows that you want to maintain a game in. And the reality is you're also looking at how can we remove unnecessary hits in the game for players, right? So health and safety must be the top priority. We don't want to lose what makes football such a wonderful sport. At the same time, if we can eliminate unnecessary, you know, exposure and risk uh, to young people, we ought to do that. And so I think some of those types of rule changes uh, uh, have been really good. Buckle up, folks. Put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office, Crypto King in our YouTube chat wants to know if, if there's still more expansion on the horizon. This is a topic that's been bubbling up around the country. It's nice to be under the security of being the Big Ten, right? We don't have to worry about that right now. But your thoughts about where we may be headed in the, in the near future? Well, you know, there's, um, there's a lot at stake, as you know. And, uh, you know, all the Big Ten ADs and, and presidents and chancellors had an opportunity today to be on a Zoom call with President Baker, uh, the new president of the NCAA. And, and obviously it was a, a robust conversation around some of the challenges, um, you know, that, that we all face. And, and some of the lack of consistency and application of rules and how they're being interpreted and, and all those types of things. So, you know, we're, we're, um, we're in an, a period of uncertainty. And I, I would say from today, in the next couple of years, um, it's going to be really uncomfortable. Uh, it really is. And so you're going to see rumors. You're going to see all kinds of these types of things. I, I've chosen not to participate in it because it's a little bit unfair to those that 
today don't enjoy the security of the Big Ten. I will only say this. Data will drive, from my estimation, uh, data will drive the decision making. Um, it has to. Uh, I think uh, the Big Ten has a, has a great leader now in Tony Petiti. Um, I've been really impressed with him as the commissioner of the Big Ten Conference. I think it's really important for him to, to get a clear understanding of, first of all, where we are in our television contracts. Let's get those long forms executed. Let's create the right structure in the Big Ten office. And then ultimately, we'll keep a keen eye aware on what's going on in terms of uh, expansion. Um, but, um, you know, it, it won't be for the faint of heart, but I will tell you that the University of Nebraska is, is blessed and fortunate to be a member of the Big Ten Conference and uh, will be a strong advocate to, to always do what's in the best long-term interest of the Big Ten Conference while still advocating uh, for, the, for, for the University of Nebraska. Um, and, uh, but I will say it's, uh, it's, it's a fascinating time. It's really uncomfortable to be honest, to, to be in, in our situations. And uh, so, but that's where we find ourselves. You mentioned the TV contract. Pete Thamel, ESPN.com, had a story that came out over the weekend that said that the Big Ten deal is not completely done. There's some language in there with adding NBC that's gotten on, maybe it's stepped on Fox's toes to a certain degree. What can you, can, what can you add to that story? Well, I don't know if I could add a lot. I, I, I would just say, in the midst of all the details and the granular things that, frankly, still need to be worked through, and, and I don't mean to minimize those, okay? I mean, when you're talking about, but, but think about this. At the core of what makes it challenging is you, you know, certain leagues have one television partner. We're talking about three elite linear television networks. You're talking about, and this was always the vision all along is to do the best that we could to try to own Saturday in college football in the Big Ten. And, you know, the big noon kickoff on Fox has been a great addition, right? So noon on Fox, linear. The 2.30 central window on CBS. You know, you look at what CBS, while that was an undervalued deal probably for the SEC, that television partnership with CBS was massively important in building the SEC's brand and, and recognition. So then we go to the 2.30 window, linear TV, and end in primetime on NBC. Now, if you've watched the NFL on primetime and NBC and the commitment, it's literally like a mini Super Bowl every Saturday night. And so I can only tell you from the university's perspective at Nebraska. Now, of course, this is part of our history and our DNA. We've built our brand on being willing to play primetime games against great opponents, you know, I grew up watching Oklahoma, Nebraska, right? ABC. And so if you're asking, will Nebraska be interested in playing primetime games, I got my hand up every day and twice on Saturday because uh, we think the University of Nebraska in primetime is a great opportunity to showcase everything that's great about the state of Nebraska, the University of Nebraska, and more importantly, our football program. Very good. Trev Alberts with us for a few more minutes, 402 413 2400, the number to call or fire off a text. We've got more coming up. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra. The perfect balance of taste and refreshment in only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Huskers, do you want a fulfilling career that's financially rewarding? Explore the many ways you can be a part of the insurance community. Go to iian.org slash careers today. Business insurance is a lot to manage. Did you know a trusted choice independent insurance agent can help guide you through it at no extra cost to you? They'll do your insurance. You just do you. Find out more at trustedchoice.com. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm sports media student Connor Clark with Campus News. More than $145 million in gross revenue has been generated by startup companies founded by alumni of UNL's Angler Agribusiness Entrepreneurship Program since the program began in 2010. With over 230 Angler Program alumni growing businesses across Nebraska, the Angler Program is making a big impact on the lives of students, alumni, and Nebraskans. In America, 
The future belongs to everyone. That's why we make trucks like Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight and counting. Made for performance and capability. Made to play hard and work smart on and off-road. That's because they're built Ford tough. So be future ready with Ford F-Series. Based on 1977 to 2022 calendar year total sales. Here's an easy pill to swallow. Right now, earn a five cent fuel saver on every prescription you fill at your Hy-Vee Pharmacy. That's five cents off per gallon of gas for each prescription filled at Hy-Vee. Hy-Vee makes it easy to fill your prescriptions. Just call or stop by your local Hy-Vee Pharmacy and let us handle the rest. You can also fill online or use the mobile app. Fill a prescription and start earning today. Some restrictions apply. See your pharmacy or hyvee.com for details. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and heading for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so hot. The air conditioner is out again. SOS, he screams and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. SOS, SOS. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared... You spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota Hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota, the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota. The brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> think again. Toyota Hybrids. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, see why 2000 through 2021 sales. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest's premier John Deere dealers, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture. Much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp with the athletic director for the Cornhuskers, Trev Alberts, 402-413-2400. Mark on our text line. Trev, when will we hear some info on kickoff times from the networks for the early season football games? That's a great question. Um, I, I think soon. You know, we're, we're working through that, and I think that's, um, you know, there's, again, there's part of a selection process and uh, trying to understand uh, where all those fit and what windows they'll fit in and what network will be a part of that. But um, I think it'll be relatively soon. And I, and I understand, and we, we push a lot. You know, it's, 
it's it's different in the NFL in the sense that like our fans and fans in college football make plans in advance. We need yeah. to be able to get these schedules out. We need to get these times out when they're playing. It's really important for our fans. And so at the same time, we're trying to be good partners with our television partners. So I anticipate, I anticipate it being sooner rather than later. People got weddings to plan, Trev. They got, come on. They need I had to miss a wedding, right? Or a, a game because of a wedding. So <laughs> That's right. Uh, Dale and Hastings. Trev, you said this is an uncomfortable time. You're going to like this. What would you need to hap have happen to make it more comfortable? Well, I just, I think in these types of roles, um, you just embrace being uncomfortable. And I, I, think, I think part of the strategy is um, you just have to sort of condition yourself to recognize that these problems exist daily. Uh, we're charged with trying to solve them. And, um, you know, I mean, I think that's part of leadership is during the most challenging times, um, you know, what can you do along with others that you're working with um, to, to create the kind of confidence in those that, that work here that, you know, that, that we're going to be okay. So I just think it's embracing being uncomfortable. I mean, this is a real time of disruption. And so I, I've always believed that in times of disruption, you have to equally respond with equally disruptive thinking. And, you know, I, I think that's what's kind of cool about Nebraska. We're, we've always been innovative. We've always been different. We've always been unafraid to to, you know, sort of act outside the norm. So I, I, I think during these times, I, I don't think Nebraska is necessarily as uncomfortable as others. But I think the other thing that's really important, and I think we have this, is during these types of times, what makes me feel comfortable is having a board of regents that's aligned, is having a governor of the state of Nebraska that understands the importance of the university, is, is having a president and a chancellor. You know, that's when you have alignment, and, and alignment is what gives you comfort. And that's where I think we come out strongly right now because the University of Nebraska right now across the board has an unprecedented alignment of leadership and that gives us a chance. Had a couple calls, didn't want to go on the air, just wanted to get your thoughts about how we are aligned for NIL at this present time. And I know you've made some moves in house on that. Yeah, so Jonathan Bateman, who's worked within our department uh, for several years, um, has been announced as our new GM of NIL. And uh, I'll tell you, I, uh, probably should have done this six months ago. I mean, this, you think about, well, six months isn't very long. The amount of change in this space in six months is crazy. I just got a two-page document uh, from Jonathan with an update on all the legal ramifications, all the advancements of where all of these proceedings are going, what the likely outcomes are going to be. Uh, but for us, uh, you know, I think we have a good strategy in, in the NIL space. And we're really grateful for all of those, our donors who are supporting the collectives that support us. and. Uh, you know, what's important to me is ensuring, obviously, you know, you have to be focused on all of those types of things that the university um, holds near and dear, but at the same time, doing everything we can for our student athletes and coaches to make sure we have a, a reasonable chance to be competitively successful. So we'll keep working on it. I've said this before. I'll say it again. We're never going to be first, but we're never going to be last. And so we have a dedicated person now, Greg, that's looking at everything from what other schools are doing, from what our state law looks like. Um, should we ad, uh, amend the state law? Should we? So making recommendations about how we best position not only ourselves, but our collectives, our student athletes uh, to be successful. Because this is a, a highly evolving space and we need to be a leader in it. You, you bring up a really good point that I don't know that a lot of people understand that every state's got different laws and regulations mm -hmm. in place. That's a little uneven, isn't it, as we go across the country? Well, you know, I think the thing that uh, fans hold near and dear is this idea of competitive equity. Like, we, we, we've always known that in, in, you know, competition from time to time, there will be those who try to break the rules, bend the rules, or cheat, or flat out cheat, right? But this is a particularly challenging one because, to your point, um, you know, right now, state laws are setting the tone about what universities can, can't do, what's available. And until there's a federal solution around it, and that's what we talked about with, with Governor Baker today, is you know what's the confidence level that we can bring some sort of guardrails around some sort of, you know, because it because it really isn't fair um, if we don't have some national set, and agreed upon, you know, just like consistency in contracts uh, across the board would be really valuable. So there's a lot of strong effort in this area, um, but again, uh, there's areas that. Um, and I'm confident in our approach, um, but um, we're going to be aggressive in this space. 
A couple of people have asked about Haymarket Park. John in Kansas says, I love Husker baseball as much as Husker football. Any future planned improvements at Haymarket Park? You know, we're always looking at making sure that our facilities are, are top line. And, uh, you know, that's been a partnership that's been good for Nebraska athletics for, for a long time. Obviously, it's a little bit different, you know. Um, certain facilities that you have 100% control over, you have 100% control over the capital improvements and those types of things. It's a little bit different over at Haymarket. Um, but we'll continue working hard with our partners over there to try to ensure that the fan experience and, more importantly, the health and safety and student-athlete experience is at, is at a high level. You know, we have a high standard at the University of Nebraska. I mean, it's, it's not like a lot of other colleges. I mean, we, we have unbelievable facilities. And part of that's our commitment on health and safety and wellness. And uh, this is the highest quality of experience that we can possibly give them. Tim in Minnesota said, congratulations on the school year. We're seeing make market improvement in some of our sports. Do you think the Big Ten will keep the baseball tournament in Omaha in the years to come? I think they have two this year and next year. Yeah, I think ultimately those things get, you know, they get bit out. And, um, of course, we love having it in Omaha. We think it makes an awful lot of sense, especially since, you know, you're going to have the uh, College World Series played there not long after it. But, um, it, you know, it, it gives all those teams in the Big Ten, you know, a place to, to aspire to ultimately get uh, for the College World Series. And, and it's just a great chance for our fan base to be able to come and participate. Obviously, uh, the better season we're having and the higher seed and those kinds of things. Uh, but I'm telling you what, um, I talk to our coaches all the time. When our fans, the players can feel it. I mean, our coaches can feel it. That fan support matters, and it helps us win. And so we just really encourage them to continue supporting our baseball program, you know, especially there in Omaha. Our Sports Nightly Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. They've got 18 brands, huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. Some final thoughts from Trev coming up. Husker fans, the 2023 Nebraska football season is right around the corner, and we need your support celebrating the 100th year of Memorial Stadium. Purchase a special Husker football through these gates mini plan. For only $100, you will be at the Northern Illinois and Louisiana Tech games, plus your choice of one home Big Ten game, including Michigan or Iowa. Three games for only $100. Tickets for the through these gates mini plan go on sale at 10 a.m. tomorrow. For more information, visit huskers.com slash tickets. Go Big Red. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890Nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student-athletes. That's 1890Nebraska.com. Woodhouse Chevy is making car buying better now with two convenient locations in Missouri Valley, Iowa and our newest location in Omaha at 112th and Dodge. Plus, going on now, receive 3.9% APR for 60 months on all in-stock 2023 Silverado 1500s when you finance with GM Financial. Find new roads with Woodhouse Chevy in Missouri Valley and now in Omaha. With approved credit, see dealer for details. Expires 5-31-2023. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. At CHI Health Clinic, we believe health care should be personal because knowing your provider personally makes appointments more comfortable, more productive, and more meaningful to your overall health. Get matched with a primary care provider based on your personality and lifestyle using CHI Health Clinic's My Provider Match Take the survey at MyProviderMatch.com to find the right provider for you. Getting healthier starts by getting personal at CHI Health Clinic. Your story, it lives in the capital city, where we take Nebraska nice to another level, and we always show up for Go Big Red. In your story, a pioneering spirit has built a community that cares. Your story is the story of Lincoln, told by those who live it and love it. Whether that's breaking news from the Capitol or sending you to the best shows in town. And here in the Lincoln Journal Star is where it comes to life. Lincoln Journal Star, where your story lives. Back final few minutes with Trev for the summer. We won't get him back. Well, we may chat with you, but we won't have a full hour with you until August. 
Text question for you. What is the projection completion date of the outdoor track and field stadium? It would be great to have another home meet. Yeah, the track itself is finished. Okay. And uh, obviously we, uh, we pulled the second phase of it was the actual like seating and fans and, and all that type of stuff. And as uh, construction costs continue to increase, unfortunately we didn't have the approval from the board to spend what was needed on that phase two. So we're, we're looking at options. You know, we looked at a lot of different options, Greg. At the end of the day, there's a standard of excellence on facilities here. And we could have done something just to say we were done. We're not, I'm not going to do that. We're, we're, we're going to do it right. And until we're ready to do it right, um, you know, we have a track. We had a track at Ed Weir, a very small amount yeah. of seating. But I want to do it right. And we're not ready yet. Uh, we don't have the resources yet to do it right. So keep working on it. Very good. I mentioned that it was quiet around campus today, but you had a military leadership summit. What was that all about? Well, you know, there's a couple core things that the university and the athletic department is, has kind of really embraced. And uh, I love the whole military appreciation during Husker football. Obviously, agriculture has been something that we've really tried to, to step into that space as well. But, uh, you know, our, our team put together this summit and uh, Kate Dean from our office and and Dr. Chatters worked on this. So we just had a room full of active, you know, whether it's ROTC, um, uh, Air Force, uh, just a whole group of military leaders. And uh, uh, several of our coaches participated. Coach Rule participated. President Carter uh, came and welcomed. Obviously, he spent 38 years in the active military. And, and uh, so it was great to have him. So just doing those types of things. I think there's just more community-oriented things that we can do in this department to, to give back and also learn from them. So it was just wonderful to have. We've got great relationships with the military. Obviously, you come to every Husker football game, you see the flyovers, you see all the, the folks that are involved. And so it was just a great chance to get together and to honor them and, and uh, just have a little bit of an appreciation uh, uh, morning with them. They were here most of the morning. Fantastic. A little over a minute to go. I know you had some Big Ten meetings earlier this month. Are we closer to a football schedule for 2024, or where, where are we sitting on that? We are. We are. We're, we're much closer good. and, and uh, have a pretty darn good idea about who we're playing. I'm not sure exactly uh, where those dates are going to be and where the orders are. But, um, um, you know, I think, I think the takeaway from it is this. We just added USC and UCLA to an already existing very difficult schedule. So across the board, I think if there's one thing you can take, about, take away from this 16-team Big Ten Conference is there are no weeks off. Um, this is going to be, as we talked about a long time ago, the margin will be so narrow. You, know, you think about the NFL games and how close those things come to the fourth quarter and who has the last possession. Uh, that level of detail, uh, that kind of structure is going to be really important. I know Coach Rule and his staff are really focused on it, but the schedules are going to be fun. There are going to be great teams come to Memorial Stadium, and every single week um, it's going to be a dogfight. But that's why we're in the Big Ten, and that's why players come to Nebraska. They want to play against great opponents in prime time, and that's what you can do here at the University of Nebraska. That's why people are craving the sport. Everything is so good about it right now. Great to see you. Enjoy your summer. We'll look Thank forward you. to our chats coming up again in the fall. Thanks for all you do. Trev Alberts with us here tonight. Next hour, we're going to talk to the Chancellor. Ronnie Green will be here. He delivered the commencement address over the weekend for the graduation that took place inside Memorial City. We'll have that and more. Sports Highly coming up on the other side. up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The thoughtfully redesigned 2023 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with up to 9.5 inches of ground clearance, more than Honda CRV or Toyota RAV4. The 2023 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of June 2022. Duto Subaru in Lincoln and DutoSubaru.com. To win the game, you gotta have more strength. You gotta be tougher. You gotta be reliable. You gotta want it more than the other guy. And you need a great team you can count on, backing you up the whole time. Whether it's in the field with your Massey Ferguson or on the field with the Huskers, red is the color of getting it done quicker, smarter, and efficiently. So this season, make sure you're checking out the lineup 
that'll get more done where and when it counts. From your Nebraska Massey Ferguson dealers. That's my neighbor Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, John. Joe's about to make a big mistake. Hey, Joe. I think it might be a good idea to call 811 to have the utilities marked before you start digging? I'm not digging very deep. It's no big deal. <laughs> no big deal. Dad, the TV's out. Internet, too. Remember, safe digging always starts with a free call to 811. Oh, what a knuckle. Brought to you by Nebraska 811. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up.
Good evening. I'm Greg Sharp with our sports ticker, which is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. Husker baseball will be the four seed this week at the Big Ten Tournament in Omaha. The Huskers will face the Rutgers Scarlet Knights Wednesday at 2. The tournament starts tomorrow, three games on tap at Charles Schwab Field. Husker infielder Max Anderson has been named a semifinalist for the Golden Spikes Award given annually to the top player in college baseball. Anderson batted 412, 19 doubles, two triples, 21 home runs. He is one of 25 semifinalists. Husker Athletics announced a football mini ticket plan. As part of the 100th anniversary of Memorial Stadium, fans can purchase a three-game package, the two non-conference games, one against Northern Illinois, the other against Louisiana Tech, and one of the five conference games. The plan, a flat $100. Tickets go on sale tomorrow morning at 10 at the Athletic Ticket Office or by calling 1-800-8-BIG-RED. Game four of the NBA Western Conference Finals tonight. The Denver Nuggets trying to reach the finals for the first time in franchise history. Lead the best of seven series, three games to none. On the ice tonight, it's game three of the Eastern Final between Carolina and Florida. The Panthers lead the series two games to none. Major League Baseball scoreboard, bottom of the seventh. The Guardians lead the White Sox 1-0. Rangers Pirates tied at one. They're also in the seventh inning. Diamondbacks ahead of the Phillies, 4-2 in the fifth. Cardinals, one behind the Reds, 4-3. Cincinnati leads there in the sixth inning. The rest of the baseball just getting underway. Again, the sports ticker brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student-athletes or name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890Nebraska.com. Dot com. Stick around. Hour 2 Sports Highly coming up next here on the Oscars Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Heinrich, long count, turns, gives it off to Gabe Irvin, left side. Gabe step arms a man, is in the end zone for a touchdown off the left end. Good shot. Yes. <laughs> it's a gold star stiff arm by 22 to 5 Pater. And the White extends their lead to 12 0. Sims by himself on the shotgun. Done. Jeff gets the snap, got a quarterback draw, runs to the five and gets stood up and breaks oh, a tackle great. into the end zone for a touchdown. There's the length and strength of Jeff Sims breaking a tackle. The two, the one one here. Drill to left field. That one's out of here. Dylan Carey makes it back to back home runs for the Cornhuskers. They lead two nothing. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cooty on the Huskers Radio Network. And we're back. Hour number two, Sports Highly here on a Monday night. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you. Hope you had a great weekend. What a fun hour. I'm going to miss having Trev in here for an hour during the summer, right? It's always fun to have him here. Yeah, and he is very uh, open and a- answers every question that comes his way. And you can, every time we say this, you can tell he's definitely had a background in broadcasting, right? But yeah, it's uh, that time of the year, right? Everybody needs a break. And we're about to that point. Cole and I were talking about this the other day where we're just talking about the name game and <laughs> what are we going to do to fill the time I in know. the summer? You know, yeah, once the athletic competition <laughs> stop, it kind of comes to a screeching halt during the month of June. But we all need a little bit of a disconnect and a break. But, man, a lot of stuff has happened since we talked late last week. Let's start with Husker softball. What a run in Stillwater. What an unbelievable Saturday night game with Wichita State where they wiped out big deficits in the seventh and then in the ninth to win it. That was an unbelievably classic game. Yeah, it really was. And and just the fight in this team. They could have, you know, given up at multiple times. And and that's what Coach Ravel said in her speech that we got to see a little behind the scenes on the video that um, the digital crew put out here um, talking about it was a breakthrough moment. I mean, how many times did we see this team that was really, really close or maybe gave up a lead late and for them to find a way to win? And that was a big moment. You're talking about win or go home. And then Wichita State is a top 25 team and a team that had just beat them, you know, the night before. And so, you know, the, the way that they fought and fought and fought, and even when they got behind, they didn't give up. They came back. I mean, just a lot of teams would not have fought the way that that team fought and doing it again how many times have we talked about this and it keeps being said but you just have to appreciate the where they got with just two pitchers just the way that softball is now and the way that the hitters have evolved you need three pitchers and and these ESPN folks were talking about it all throughout the weekend we've heard coach Ravel say it not a lot of teams have gotten to this point we're playing for a regional championship with just two pitchers and so Kaylin and they did it they've done it all year because Kaylin Kenny went out what the second weekend of the season 
And it, it was, was early. It was early. And yeah. so they've, they've had to carry a heavy load at that, in addition to just having those two in the postseason. It's not like Kalen just went out last week. And so just so impressed and, and, you know, love the fight of this team. And Courtney has been, Courtney Wallace has been one of my favorite Huskers since I stepped on campus. But the core of that group is coming back. There is some big, exciting things, I think, ahead for Husker softball. And now they've got a taste of it. And, and they've done it twice now. It's uh, now there's another breakthrough moment, I think, very much awaiting this team. Yeah, Kenny only played in eight games, so she did not have much of an impact. Well, that's and just... Maddie brought up not only was she going to be that third pitcher, but she also was a big bat for this lineup. She right. hit. And a lot of times, even when she wasn't pitching, she'd hit. And she had a big hit last year in the regional. So, you know, missing her presence, you know, I think this team definitely missed her presence. But figuring out how to play without her. And then there was times where Sydney Gray was out. And then Billy Andrews battled a hamstring, which, as we know, those linger like crazy. And so it kind of hindered her a little bit. Brooke was hurt. They're just, they were, there's a lot of things, I think, going on behind the scenes that we didn't even know about. So for them to continue to, Again, fight, and, and they could have easily said, oh, we're happy just to get in, see our names called and get in. And no, they went and played. And, and I think a lot of the softball world took notice of what they did. Because Wichita State, again, was a team that, being that Oklahoma State lost 11 of their last 13 games, and people thought maybe Wichita State could have been a team that advanced to the Super Regionals. And Nebraska goes in there and knocks off Wichita State. That caught a lot of attention from the softball world this weekend. You, you mentioned Courtney, and I, I want to talk about her a little bit. What, what, a, what a star. I mean, she, she didn't bat a lot, but she went, what, four for four yesterday in the elimination game? I mean, she got hits every time she came up. What an amazing career. I hope people appreciate what a really good career she had. Four for four against arguably one of the best pitchers sure. in college softball. I mean, yeah. Um, the yeah the way that she left it all out there and i put out a tweet about this i mean courtney wallace should be an example to every athlete of every sport on selflessness because you know she again how many times did she take the ball and she you know she was probably just absolutely sore gassed didn't have much left in the tank but found a way to do it for her team uh but also to leave every single ounce of what she had i mean there is no doubt there might be some players that leave and thought, oh, well, what if I did this? Or maybe I could have done this. Courtney Wallace is not that athlete. She can walk away from her college career knowing that she did absolutely everything possible to help this program. She left the program better than she found it. Coach Ravel had echoed that on, on social media as well. I mean, she literally did everything she could. I mean, you could not have asked for anything more of Courtney Wallace. But then the way that she represents herself She's a was an SID intern this past yeah, year she and, was. and yeah. helped me get football interviews, you know, and, and is just such a, a pleasure to be around. She's got big things ahead of her, whatever it is that she wants to do. I know, you know, at one point she's still trying to decide this. I keep trying to tell her she needs to get into broadcasting because I think she'd have a great perspective on that. And I, I do think she has an opportunity for that coming up. But she's going to be a star, whatever it is that she decides to do. But I'm just cannot say enough about the way that she closed out her career and most athletes should try to do what she did because there's going to be no regret left for Courtney Wallace. Just a marvelous career and, and you know I, I know she probably would have liked to have batted more but the need for this team to go when Kenny went out was she had to take a, on a brunt of the pitching and she didn't complain she just went out and did it and I just think she's I think she's terrific I know she's not going to get a lot of all-American honors and that type of thing, but she's one heck of a college softball player. Absolutely. I mean, she and a Nebraska kid and came and committed to this program and, and helped get back to where it is when, you know, postseason regulars now. I mean, I think now the way that she's helped turn this this thing around and, and help this thing get back to where this Nebraska is going to be a team you consistently see in the postseason. And, you know, I, I just, she's a tremendous leader. I can't tell you how many times her name comes up from, from younger players of, of her helping them get into this college softball thing, how she's put her arm around players and, you know, helped them get adjusted and all the things that she's been there she's an incredible teammate too on top of all of that a lot of times it's hard to be both the star player and a great leader and a great uh captain and a great just friend overall but she just literally was the whole entire package i, I mean you, you just look at hey who is who is the complete package i mean that is courtney wallace no doubt what what a great career and I'm, I'm glad she went out with with a high note of an unbelievable regional play. So it was really cool. You know, she and and I think the girl at 
Oklahoma were high school teammates. Jordy Ball? I think Jordy was a little bit younger, right? So Jordy, if... Same high school. If Jordy was... Um, I think they're two years apart. Or maybe, three. Three, because this would have been Courtney's fifth year, and Jordy's that? a sophomore. How about that? Pepe and La Vista. Both those kids came out of Pepe and La Vista. That's pretty cool. You know, and again, I think it shows that how, you know, how good the high school sports, and we just wrapped up the state track meet last weekend, state soccer last weekend. This state, for not having a lot of population, produces a lot of female Division One athletes. I, you and I have talked about this before, and maybe on the show, maybe off the show, but my dad is pretty big into the Oklahoma high school sports, and since he's been coming up here and watching players like Alexis Markowski and Allison Widener and Maddie Kroll. I mean, and then all the softball players, too. And then you're talking about not even just here, but Wichita State had three players from the state of Nebraska. I mean, there's a player in the portal right now that is one of the probably a lot of people have said at this point, the number one player in the portal from Lincoln, Nebraska. The way that this state develops athletes, female athletes, the soccer stars, from Gretna. I mean, it is uh, really, really impressive. And, and that's what my dad said, the way that Nebraska develops their high school talent to be able to go compete at a division one level. It really is impressive. And then, oh, by the way, you throw in what the Omaha, there's a lot of talent from the state of Nebraska that are playing for UNO on all, they, all of their they sports. They won a game in a regional. Yeah. First so, time ever. I mean, it is uh, really, really impressive. And, you know, even the men's sports, there's some basketball players some football players that are really highly sought after it is really a, you know for the population not being as large as some of the other states it is really i would love to do a deep dive into that of, of not just um you know the number of players but per capita you know the number of per capita players for women's sports it's especially it's got to be in the top around the top for represent representatives from the state. Oh, and yeah, well, let's remember Lindsey Krause and Becca Alec. Yeah, you know I mean, they just talk, the volleyball talent, the absolutely. Vo the volleyball uh, names. That's that keep a, I out. love that about all, almost all of the sports here. If you look at their rosters, sometimes you go to like places and you're looking, and there not might not be a single player from that state, but not the case with Nebraska women's sports. I mean, you look at that, and there are Nebraska talent well, all over every single sport well, we had all the waverly girls on the volleyball team yeah now, two of them are gone but you still have um well they're i guess they're all three gone no becca becca played it did some at waverly uh so yeah all right uh great weekend for softball baseball will play wednesday at two up in omaha they win the purdue series two games to one they get the four seed pick for fifth finish fourth I know those disappointing midweek games are going to make them have to win the tournament to get into the NCAA tournament, but it uh, could be a fun week up in Omaha. We'll have all those broadcasts coming your way here on the HRN. You think nothing short of a title? Well, they got to win it. They got to win it. Yeah. RPI is way, way So out. how many teams do you think the Big Ten gets in? Three right now, but then you, get, you could get a bid stealer. Mm -hmm. If Nebraska or Rutgers, say, wins the tournament, they could steal a bid. Iowa's in, Indiana's in, Maryland's in, those three. And in softball, the only one that got out of the first weekend is Northwestern. Yeah. So they made it to the Supers. I think they go to Bama. They'll have a shot, I think, at Bama. I think so, too. I think so, too. I think that's – there is a very good chance, again, once again, there might only be one SEC team. And what they got, 12 in? 13 of 14. 13. Crazy. How about UCLA? 0 oh, and 2. The Shocking. number two team in the country goes 0 oh, and 2. It's a growing sport, a lot like we've heard Coach Cook say about volleyball and the parity. And if you have a really dominant pitcher, that puts you into some contention. And then if you don't have to play a lot of games, I mean, it is. Um, if you get one of those pitchers and then that UCLA, just the bats, just they couldn't get it going. And so, shocker, shocker. There were a lot of upsets. Arkansas goes down. They're out. Um, Oregon knocks off Arkansas. Um, and a lot of people had thought Arkansas would be a team that was a, a clear favorite there. Uh, who else? There's another big upset that um, happened. But Well, Lafayette beat LSU. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. So yeah. LSU is out. Yeah. So, so those were two SEC teams that got to host, LSU and Arkansas, that didn't get out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I tried to tell you that I was not happy about that. And... It came to fruition. They got three teams that moved up. Four, four. You know, and that's that's the thing. I, I again, I don't think the Big Ten really deserved any more bids than what they got. But some other teams should have hosted. Th that's too. I mean, Sprinkle there's a lot of around. issues. I think that that needs to be looked at. But they should not have had so many teams hosting. Correct. And Alabama barely a... got out, and they got it handed to them on a silver platter. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. Uh, here's what we have coming up this hour. Ronnie Green's going to join us. Uh, he gave the commencement address over the weekend. Huge crowd. If you saw the pictures of Memorial Stadium, you would have thought there was a football game going on. It was a huge crowd here Saturday morning. Cole had was photo bombing everybody's pictures as he came in to run the baseball broadcast uh, that day, and all the pictures were going on outside the stadium. But the chance is going to join us here in a little bit. We all, later in the hour, we got to talk about. The PGA, what a great tournament that was. Oh, Jake Myers has made a heck of a catch. Oh, boy, Jake, want to hang on to that. I'm looking at the, the Astros. Uh, the Brewers are playing, so the former Huskers made a heck of a catch in center field. So the Chancellor coming up here in just a couple minutes. And we want your input to the program, 402-413-2400. That is our Sports Nightly Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 Convenient locations are online at woodhouse.com anytime. 18 brands, a huge selection of pre-owned that you can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. We're back with the Chancellor next. There is no place like Nebraska, and there is no place that treats you like your home like Sap Brothers. For over 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland and has been a reliable partner to local farms, businesses, and Huskers fans across Nebraska. Providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane. Servicing your farming equipment and welcoming guests into our travel centers. Visit www.sapbros.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm broadcasting student Ann Gallagher with Campus News. 26 Husker students presented research findings on nuclear deterrence to a panel of U.S. Strategic Command officials at STRATCOM headquarters in Bellevue. The student-led presentation was the culmination of a semester of STRATCOM-guided research and the latest in a years-long partnership between STRATCOM and the National Security Studies Program at Nebraska. Here's the 1-0. Anderson swings and hits that one hard to right. Jarvis back to the track, to the wall, and is gone. Max Anderson gets his second homer of the series. On Wednesday, tune in with Greg Sharp and Ben McLaughlin as the baseball team matches up with Rutgers at Charles Schwab Field up in Omaha for the Big Ten Tournament. Pre-game coverage begins at 1.30 p.m. on the Huskers radio network. Tune in to your local affiliates or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Here's an easy pill to swallow. Right now, earn a five cent fuel saver on every prescription you fill at your Hy-Vee Pharmacy. That's five cents off per gallon of gas for each prescription filled at Hy-Vee. Hy-Vee makes it easy to fill your prescriptions. Just call or stop by your local Hy-Vee Pharmacy and let us handle the rest. You can also fill online or use the mobile app. Fill a prescription and start earning today. Some restrictions apply. See your pharmacy or hyvee.com for details. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hello, tomorrow. We may not know exactly what you've got in store for us, for our routines and our normals. But here's the thing. Turns out, we've got this. We haven't seen everything, but we have seen ourselves be more ready for whatever you bring than we thought we would be. So when it comes to tomorrow... Bring on the day. First Interstate, built for you. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Visit us at firstinterstate.com. Baseball season has arrived, and your local Cynics has all your favorite snacks and beverages for the game. So whether you're hitting the road for an away game, headed to Haymarket Park, or going to cheer on your favorite local team, make Cenex your destination for top quality fuel, your favorite snacks, and service from a local smile. Fuel your fandom at your local Cenex station. Husker Pride, powered locally at Cenex. Pickup truck, sports car, motorcycle, minivan, townhouse, two-story, farmhouse, fixer-upper. What you drive and where you live is different for everyone, so it's important to have insurance that fits your needs and is just right for you. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that, which is why our agents help you design a comprehensive auto, home, and life insurance plan. Insurance that fits just right. See Shelter Agent Jeb Brandt in Hastings or Callie Schilke in Imperial today. Farmers can make what seems impossible reality with a little hard work and ingenuity. They find solutions to reduce inputs and improve their yield. Valley Irrigation is no different. As the leader in irrigation technology, we deliver results and optimize your operation. 
Because when you have a vision for the future, you need the people that can make it possible by your side. Expect what's next. Expect what's possible from Valley. Visit us at valleyirrigation.com. Did I forget something? No, just wanted to tell you I love you. Oh, don't forget to buckle up. Drive safe. I will. Love you too. Someone is counting on you to buckle up. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Husker fans, the 2023 Nebraska football season is right around the corner, and we need your support celebrating the 100th year of Memorial Stadium. Purchase a special Husker football through these gates mini plan. For only $100, you will be at the Northern Illinois and Louisiana Tech games, plus your choice of one home Big Ten game, including Michigan or Iowa. Three games for only $100. Tickets for the through these gates mini plan go on sale at 10 a.m. tomorrow. For more information, visit huskers.com slash tickets. Go Big Red. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center and sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. A real delight for us tonight to be joined by the Chancellor of the University of Nebraska, Lincoln, Ronnie Green. Always great to have you in studio with us here. I know you just wrapped up the semester. Uh, we're wrapping up the, the spring sport season. It's kind of a busy time here on campus. Uh, it sure is. You know, and as we see the the spring sports season come to a close for our teams, you know, with baseball going into the Big Ten tournament, uh, softball having qualified for the NCAA after a great year for our women's softball team, track and field knocking it out of the park with a big win at the Big Ten tournament for our men's track and field team and our women placing third in the tournament off to the NCAAs in early June um, in Austin. So just really excited for them to to be ranked sixth in the country in our track and field team. It's, um, we've had a lot of success in the past in track and field, but you know, this is the first time in a few years that we've been at this pinnacle for, for track and field. So just excited. Uh, it's kind of a fun time to see the end being worn, right? Um, and we're looking forward to a big week in the Big Ten tournament in baseball up the road here in Omaha. No doubt. Seven years since the track team won the, the conference championships. That, that was fantastic. Huge weekend, commencement at Memorial Stadium. And you were the keynote speaker. Let's start with that. What did that mean to you to make that speech presiding over the ceremony for the last time? Well, you know, it was my 21st commencement as the UNL Chancellor and um, uh, nearly 40,000 graduates over those last seven years. And being able to experience that with our graduates and with their families is certainly a high point of the year. For me, it has been every time, right? And over the last 13 years that I've been back at the university, I think I, I counted it up before commencement. I've done 31 commencements uh, in the time I've been here at UNL, and every one of them is special. This one was particularly special for a couple of reasons. One is that it was our fourth record graduating class in the last six years um, for the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, and it just... I, I can't begin to describe how awesome that is given the time period that we've been through and given the time that these students were students at the University of Nebraska, right? They came in in the fall of 2019 as freshmen for our undergraduates. Um, I talked about them brimming with hope and watching them run into the stadium as freshmen and form their in in August of, not, of uh, 2020, 2019. And then, you know, the world changed yeah. with the last several years in so many different ways, and they continued to excel. Um, they came through and graduated at one of our highest rates ever. So we just, I just was an immensely proud moment for them and for their families um, across the board. And, and it was a, one of those surreal moments I'll remember in my life too, right, as I go off into the sunset in the next year of our life. Um, to have the opportunity to speak to them um, as a commencement speaker, you know, that's something I would have never dreamed of having the opportunity to do and felt so honored to be asked to do for both our undergraduates and graduates, uh, uh, students that graduated the day before. Uh, so just a, a real moment. And then it added to that, we honored some real, you know, stalwart people as part of the ceremony as well. 
uh, former uh, Governor Bob Kerry of Nebraska, Senator, U.S. Senator Kerry, um, honored with an honorary doctorate uh, in the commencement ceremony. Um, I've gotten to be very good friends with Bob over the years, and, and it was just great to honor him for his service to our country and to our state. Um, Joanne Martin, who was the CEO of Emeritus uh, and a stalwart business leader, one of our most, most accomplished alumni of the university, uh, who we lost here a few years ago uh, after her retirement as CEO of Emeritus, uh, honored her with the building, Builder Award for the university and um, honored her family uh, as well. So just a super tremendous, wonderful day in Memorial Stadium and with our graduates um, for uh, this, this particular uh, commencement exercise. Congratulations to all the graduates. Side note, Joanne was a huge Husker volleyball she fan. She indeed was, <laughs> but, uh, all across the board, but volleyball oh, in particular. Sure was. You have certainly seen a lot of change in college athletics in your time just as chancellor here at UNL, and there's been, always been such a strong commitment from the university for the student athletes. Tell us why that's important here in Nebraska. Well, you know, we, have, we have a real legacy here. Everyone knows that. Nebraska is kind of the pinnacle in, of what it means to be a student athlete nationally, and um, that's a reputation and a, and a pinnacle that we, we take very seriously here as an institution. And, um, you know, the, there is a lot of change that is occurring in intercollegiate athletics, you know, as we speak with uh, name, image, and likeness that's been implemented now for student athletes. A lot of change in the way that the transfer portal happens. I'm sure that that hasn't been discussed on Sports Nightly at all, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, Greg, but it's, you know, those changes are occurring, but we're so well positioned here in Nebraska to be a leader um, in those in those arenas as well. And then as student athletes, um, you know, the, this, this institution and what its history is and the way our student athletes are supported and succeed here as students, I you know the, that number of 349 academic All-Americans that's, that's in Memorial Stadium is, is a, a real and profound thing that we continue to add academic All-Americans. Even in this last year, we've added more mm -hmm. academic All-Americans and that, that leading national total that we have by, by a mile, really, in, in um, intercollegiate athletics. The fact that this last year, our, our student athletes and our graduation success rate of our student athletes was the highest it has ever been in the institution's history and that we were second amongst all public institutions of higher education in our graduation success rate nationally. Um, this speaks volumes about the, the quality of the experience here for our student athletes and how much we value that um, and treasure that here as well. I, uh, I don't think I've had the opportunity to visit with you since the night at the lead that we had here in late April. That's an annual event that honors our student athletes and that honors their their academic success, their service and leadership success on campus. I tell you, you, you just sit there and you marvel at what these students do and how successful they are in doing it. There is just no other place like it than this institution uh, here. It matters. So, uh, so uh, uh, again, a real proud point for me as I, as I look back on these last years. Well, you announced in December that you would, would be stepping down as chancellor here this summer, about a month left to go. But I have a feeling you're still going to be following those Huskers in the fall. You and Jane are going to be following <laughs> those Huskers. What's, exci what's exciting for you? Oh, as you, think well, you know, it's all exciting, right? So we, uh, I, my, my standard line has been, uh, you will continue to see Jane and I at university events. That right. won't change, and we'll continue to be the strongest supporters from the sidelines and the seats of the university and the athletic programs and the university broadly, certainly. Uh, but, you know, a lot of excitement coming up in the year ahead in our athletics programs and a lot of changes that we're expecting to see in our athletic programs. Yeah, the other, um, a lot of, lot of focus on football, obviously, and, and what that's going to look like this fall under the new coaching leadership and how Matt has come in with his team and has uh, just a lot of hope there for what we're going to see in that, that team. Uh, Jane and I have tremendously enjoyed getting to know Matt 
um, personally, and I've been and been working closely with him too. Is that he's just a quality human being. There's just no way other to describe it than that. Um, the whole volleyball deal, you know, uh, having that that record break in the way that it's going to break is going to be a world event, so to speak. Uh, no doubt about that. I. I have joked. Um, I, I remember Trev actually saying this the day that we had the press announcement about the volleyball, the plan for the volleyball event in Memorial Stadium in August, and and he made some comment to the effect of, "I got in a little trouble with the Chancellor's wife because the Chancellor's wife was not very happy with uh, the Chancellor when she found out about this event because they were going to be out of the country." And uh, uh, that's that's. True, but I, as I described to uh, Husker Jane, I said, Jane, you know, we're going to be in Italy, but they eat dinner about 10 o'clock at night, and so we'll just we, you, we'll just be in uh, uh, having our glass of wine, watching it you know, yeah. live, you know, <laughs> in the middle of the night. But just just a lot to look forward to here in the time ahead, and um, as the Go Big project opens here later this fall, and seeing that that happen, you know, as a um, as I walked through that with um, with the construction folks just uh, a couple of weeks ago, and seeing the the reality of what that's going to be like and do for the program, uh, it's just an exciting time Very that good. is ahead. Well, I've certainly enjoyed our chats. Going to miss seeing you around. Don't be a stranger. Please don't be a stranger. Oh, uh, we we sure won't. You know you know that will be the case, and uh, we're just looking forward to to. Uh, being part of Husker Nation. Enjoy the next phase of your life. You've enjoyed, you've, you bet. You've Go Big Red. Ronnie Green with us here on Sports Sunday. We're back with more coming up next. From the University of Nebraska Lincoln, I'm broadcasting student Grant Hansen with Campus News. As worldwide leaders in ag technology, UNL faculty and students innovate using emerging technologies to improve yields and nutrition and designing wireless infield networks increasing precision in agriculture. Plus, UNL is breaking ground on a $7.2 million feedlot innovation center near Meade. UNL is doing big things for the future of agriculture. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890Nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student-athletes. That's 1890Nebraska.com. Visit Woodhouse Nissan for all your Nissan needs. Whether you're looking to purchase, lease, or finance your next vehicle, our team offers a personalized shopping experience. Right now, lease a new 2023 Rogue SV all-wheel drive for $385 a month, 436 months, and 5,000 miles per year. Visit one of our two convenient Woodhouse Nissan locations today. With approved credit, tax title, and license extra. Discounted price based on sale price of $31,865 minus $600 NMAC cash rebate. VIN number PC767330. Expires 531.23. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota, the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota, the brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> think again. Toyota Hybrids. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. 
based on manufacturer estimates. CY 2000 through 2021 sales. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so hot. The air conditioner is out again. SOS, he screams and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. SOS, SOS. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared... You spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp rejoined by Jessica Cooney. I'm going to miss that man. I know he's going to be around. I'm going to see him. But he has been a very good supporter of he lo- he and his wife love Husker sports. Jane is one of my favorite oh. people. I she is the kindest. They both are so very very kind. But obviously, I've uh, gotten to know Jane a little bit. And good thing is they will be around they because are. they will be yeah. at Husker sporting events. You could not keep Jane away from that. And so we will see them. They're just huge supporters, and they will keep supporting these athletic uh, athletics programs. But I know you'll miss your. Your chats with we him, do. your weekly yeah. chats. It's been fun to talk to him down through the years, seven years. And by the time he's walking out here the next month, he's like the second longest tenured Big Ten president slash chancellor. Crazy. And so, like, and Trev mentioned it last hour how new all the presidents are around the conference. So, uh, a different deal. But wish him well, wish him good luck in the next phase of his life. They did name the new preferred candidate to take his position. Um, a gentleman from who had been at the president at Southern Miss, and so we, and, and, and then he's got to go through some. His name is hold on, I've got it here a second. Uh, Rodney Bennett he is going to be in line to be the next chancellor at the University of Nebraska Lincoln. So uh, we'll learn more about him in the coming days. Um, Pat Narduzzi, the head coach at Pitt. Remember last year he got into it, I think, with Lincoln Riley at USC about a wide Tampering. receiver. Tampering with yeah, the wide receiver. Yeah, it was receiver. Blitnikoff winner. He was a pretty good player. Yeah, it was the Blitnikoff uh, winner. What was his name? The wide receiver. I can't, I'm drawing a blank on the kid's Justin name. Justin Addison. Addison, yeah. Is it he, Justin? Jordan. Think, Jordan. Jor- Jordan Addison? Jordan Addison. It starts with a J. I think it's Jordan Addison. Well, today, he kind of went off on an interview about Deion Sanders and how he is, in, in Narduzzi's thing, abusing the transfer portal. This is a quote. At the ACC spring meetings he gave, that's not the way it's meant to be. That's not what the portal rule intended to be. It was not to overhaul your roster. We're going to see how it works out. But that, to me, looks bad on college football coaches across the country. The reflection is on one guy right now. But when you look at it overall, those kids that have moms, dads, brothers, sisters, goals in life, I don't know how many of those 70 that left that program really wanted to leave or were they kicked in the butt to get out. 
pretty strong. Yeah, and I mean, I, I tend to agree with it because, you know, for student athletes, yes, the portal is there now, but they still don't have the luxury. This is their one time transfer, and maybe they didn't know. They didn't know that that's what they were going to do. And so until he, he just puts them in a, in, a, in a tough bind. And with coaches, they can come and go as they please, right? But with some of these student athletes, they probably signed on thinking they'd play their entire career at. Colorado and even look at the the kids here just because a new coaching change comes in there are some players that want to play for that institution that program I mean look how many players that stayed here when the coaching change happened and they didn't sign up to play and coach rule said that when he came in that was one of the things that I think most people took away from in his introductory press conference I want to coach you but you didn't necessarily you didn't sign up to play for me so I want to give you a chance to see if you want to play for me and so you know, that was to me the right approach to it and just keep kicking people off just because they, you didn't recruit them in the first place to me. I don't I don't agree with that either. So uh, what's his ro what's that roster right now? Well, according to the, the I'm reading this off of a story on CBS Sports dot com. They have had 51 scholarship players enter the portal. 51. Oh, my goodness. And how many have they brought in? 47. And they're still adding. So he's added 47 new guys from the portal. And his thing was when, when Dion got to Colorado, he basically walked in when he first met the team and he said, most of you better go ahead and get your name in the portals. I'm not keeping most of you. Yeah. What, what about the Louis Vuitton luggage? I mean, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So strong words from, from Pat Narduzzi, who's not bashful. He's been pretty outspoken with the Addison kid last year who left Pitt he, to go to play here's, at USC. In his defense, he was not the only coach that was – questioning right. some of USC's, you know, um, tampering I don't, or, you know, tampering might be, that's what, you know, the, the word is, but I don't want to be accusatory, but there were several coaches that kind of had alluded to the fact that maybe USC wasn't doing things completely right. On the up and up. Great golf tournament over the weekend. The PGA was phenomenal. Great theater. I wish it didn't rain all day Saturday on the guys, but that made it, I mean, hey, you got to go play through some elements sometimes. Brooks Kepka was phenomenal. Hit great shot after great shot. Five time major champion now for Brooks Kepka. And such a great story, too. Why, why don't people like Brooks Kepka? I like He's him. a little cold. He's a little kind of robotic at times. I think they like, he's, there's an arrogance about Brooks, but I think that's what makes him really good. I think that personality. That's why golf is better, because you're seeing these different personalities. It, you used to not be allowed to show that kind of personality, right? right? And so now you're seeing all these different, and whether you like them or hate them, there's, there's a reason to cheer or cheer against people where there wasn't. I don't think there was as much as that before, and that's why you like sports, right? You have the characters that you root for, you root against. I like Brooks Koepka. I always have, and I understand, like, there's, uh, people don't like the live golfers, whatever, but I wanted him to win the Masters, and he couldn't find a way to get it done. He lost the lead, but the what he's been through and his mental health struggles and for him to be as, as high as he was and then to drop off as low as he was and to find his way back. And you and I talked about this before the PGA Championship happened. I think it makes for great drama, great television, the fact that these live golfers are coming in and competing at these major tournaments. I like it. I've been wanting that to happen. I've been asking for that to happen. I've been saying that every single major tournament, I want to see a live golfer win it, and it happens. Well, you looked at the leaderboard yesterday. DeChambeau's playing on the live tour. Kepka is, too. Kepka wins it. Your pre-tournament pick was Victor. Yeah. You did. I went DJ, who did not play very well. I have um, I've almost won the last two. You have. I had, I had Brooks at the ma uh, Masters, and then yep. I had Victor Hovland. One of these days, maybe I'll get it right. I don't know. Well, it was great drama. And then afterwards, if and I was watching some last night on the Golf Channel, they were having the great debate about whether Brooks should be allowed to compete for the United States in the Ryder Cup in the fall. And there's some commentators on the Golf Channel that say, absolutely not. Why? You need to be a member of the PGA Tour. And, but then, then Brad Faxon was like, why? You're, this isn't the PGA Tour against the European no. Tour. It's the best golfers it's, in the it's U.S. It's the best. And that's what, it's such a great event. And I, to me, I mean, that's, I want to see the best golfers from the United States make it. I mean, to play on that team. And Well, he's a lock. If you just go by the point system, he's a lock. Yeah. He finished, what, second at the Masters and first at the PGA. You know? When does that come out? The team gets named in August, so we're two months away, and he may go do really well in the U.S. Open in a couple weeks, the way he's playing. If Brooks is actually Brooks of old, of that 
caliber, then yes, he will. He that was not the last major that he won. If he plays like that, he's going to win another one. I agree. And maybe not just one. He's so it's so interesting, Jessica, because when he plays week to week, he doesn't win. He only it, gets geared up when the, the big tournaments come. It is so hard to win in golf. There's a reason why there's not very many. When you look at that list of major wins. There's not very many people on that list because it is just so hard to win. Everything has to go right. And that's why you have to appreciate what Brooks has done to be able to stay relevant. Look at Jordan Spieth. We thought Jordan Spieth was going to be a guy. And when's the last ma major he won? It's been five years. He hasn't five even years been so. in contention the last few. Rory hasn't won in 10 years. Yeah. How about that? And won a major. He's won tournaments, but he hasn't won a major in 10 right. years. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's not easy to do. Really hard to do. Great theater, great stuff over the. The uh, now, okay, now I'm gonna give you. I gave you kudos on your golf picks. Now your <laughs> NBA, not. your NBA pick is not looking very good. They're uh, winning the night it's early. Not, it's not. I mean, they're just completely. They're up me, eleven to four tonight, but it's early. Run out of gas. They can't hit a three to save their life, and yeah. and Denver can't miss a three to save their life. Joker's pretty good. Yes, he's but really good. But he's. I I brag so much on the Lakers and the help that the role players had done. Denver's. Role players are stepping up in this series. I mean, they literally cannot miss. I mean, Jeff Green has been unbelievable. Murray's been phenomenal. I mean, their players, their their um, supporting cast has really stepped up, and the Lakers have just, boy, they just they look like they. I mean, I think I could shoot better than they have this week. Yeah, the, this round for the NBA has been so disappointing, and you it know. Has. Both because the Eastern Conference isn't any good. It's 3-0 no. Miami, and they and haven't even really. The Western has been close, but. They're not the East. The Heat have just like dominated. They have totally dominated. I didn't even watch the last two games because I mean I was watching softball, so I didn't even watch. I kept a tab on it, but I didn't want to hear people giving me a hard time anymore. Hey, listen to this. So I just I told you during the break that Peyton Manning won an Emmy for his outstanding personal personality event analyst for what they do on the Manning cast. Eli Manning quote tweeted the announcement and said, I did not know you could win an Emmy for just telling fans when coaches should call a timeout. <laughs> Which is what he does. Call timeout. Why do you make that throw? Those guys are really good. Peyton is funny. Yeah. He is a funny guy. Eli is funny. And I thought. He's dry. Yeah, yes. He's got a difference. Yeah. But they, they do good together. They you do. Know? Peyton brings it out of him a little bit. Peyton's, I mean, Peyton's got a, a, a Beans, Bush's Beans television <laughs> commercial he's doing doing now. Hey, we haven't done weekend winners in like months. We're going to do one tonight. We're going to come back and have that for you next. Husker fans, mark your calendar for Sunday morning, July 16th to join the Nebraska football team in the race for a cure against pediatric brain cancer. It's the 11th annual Nebraska football road race. This year, all runners start and finish on Tom Osborne Field in Memorial Stadium. The final 69 yards will recreate the iconic 2013 SB play of the year when brain cancer patient Jack Hoffman scored a touchdown in the spring game. To register, go to huskers.com slash road race. Sponsored by the home agency with support from the Lincoln Track Club. More Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic care first. Studies show that chiropractic is safe, drug-free, and the most effective treatment option for back, neck, and joint pain. It can also help patients of all ages reduce migraines, improve mobility, and maximize athletic performance. Keep the entire family healthy and active with natural, cost-effective chiropractic care. Find a chiropractic physician near you at nebraskachiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. It's time again for some Nebraska farm facts. For Nebraska soybean farmers, sustainability is a way of life. 97% of farms are family-owned, and 95% are participating in conservation programs and using sustainable practices. And they have significant sustainability goals by 2025. 10% more energy efficiency, 10% less land, and 25% less soil erosion. 
This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers. Growing opportunity from the ground up. Folks, buckle up with that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. We have not had weekend winners, I don't think since maybe in March at some point in time, because we've had the Will Bolt radio show for the last 10 weeks. So it's been a while since we've had weekend winners. I hope everybody remembers how to do that. Cole, this is where Andrew would botch this a lot, so don't bot you don't no pressure, but don't botch this. <laughs> I won't botch it. Um, my winner. Carmelo Anthony announced his retirement this afternoon, or earlier today. What a career. What a career indeed. And actually, that was the first NBA game I ever went to was when he was on the Nuggets. And I had to be 9 or 10. And I do remember him being all the buzz when I... Uh, when I went to go see him even back then. so He and LeBron are close to the same age. They're they same were, draft class. Same yeah. draft class. Uh, I think but he, Carmelo yeah. went a year to college. One, so he's so one he's, year older. Yeah. Yeah. Great career. Haven't you seen the picture of their outfits? They all had on the oh, baggy suits. That's right. Yeah, when those were in. Those were in, those baggy suits. That got brought up recently. I don't know why. But. All right. What do you have? Michael Block. Yeah. I mean, I figured you might go there, so that was A for me since you went to me first. I'll go with Michael Block. My B was Courtney Wallace, but what an incredible story all weekend long, and, and he's, he was just so endearing, and his reaction to playing with Rory, but then when um, the Amanda, what's her name, that's their reporter. Oh, it was Balearos, and she's gotten married. She's, I think she's one of the best in the yeah, game. she's good. And she's a very good interviewer, and how she... Um, Interacted with him and showed him the his club and uh, reacting to his hole in one and he starts he gets emotional on the air. I mean, it just it was a feel good story of the weekend. The hole in one was unbelievable. He just dunked it and he didn't know it was in. No, he he was like, why is why is Rory hugging me? <laughs> and then, that didn't go in. No, no. And then he got the phone call from the organizer of the Colonial, which is this week's tournament stop. They gave him an exemption. He's going to go down and play there. Yeah, I mean, and then the son chiming in. It, he was, it, uh, the fans loved him, and he gave him a, a salute, and they just went bonkers. It just literally from start to finish, his story, making the cut, but then he was going out to the bars and hanging out with the locals, and it just was a great story. That's, it, that's what it's about, right? I mean, we can talk about Brooks and Rory and all of that, but these kinds of stories also are what makes golf so great. Brooks, on his way to go sign his card, walked by my, and then he goes, I hear drinks are on you <laughs> because of the hole in one. That was well, cool. Well, and his top 15 got him uh, next qualified year's, for next year. Yep, Valhalla in, in Kentucky for next year's PGA. All right, my winner is you were going to go, Courtney. I'm just going to go to that Husker softball team on Saturday night to rally in the seventh, three runs down to tie it, to rally in the ninth after falling behind by two runs to win it. Remarkable drama, as Trev said, in hour one. I lost some sleep Saturday night listening to the and watching those games. What a tremendous gutty effort by that team. I know it didn't end the way they wanted to in Stillwater, but what a great finish to their season. That was cool. Love it. It was I'm sad that it's over, but that was a fun team to to root on and, and watch throughout their run. We have a full show tomorrow night. In fact, we'll do a kind of a, a post post mortem on softball. Nate Roar is going to join us tomorrow night. Get his thoughts about the future. Also, don't forget, the tickets go on sale tomorrow for the Through These Gates mini plan for Husker football, 10 a.m. Huskers.com slash tickets are calling the athletic ticket office tomorrow morning. A ticket to both of the non-conference games, and you get to pick a conference game. That's a pretty cool little deal. That's happening tomorrow. Have a great night. Talk to you tomorrow. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Cornerstone Bank proudly serves Nebraska with a full line of loan and deposit products. Cornerstone is large enough to handle all of your financial needs. 
while offering the personal service you deserve and the local decision making you expect from a family owned community bank. Stop in or call one of the Cornerstone Bank locations near you to discover the Cornerstone difference. Bank on a solid foundation. Cornerstone Bank. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Loan subject to approval. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm broadcasting student Ann Gallagher with Campus News. UNL is the only Big Ten university in Nebraska, part of the only conference with an academic alliance. Being in the Big Ten means superior academics, unique student opportunities, better resources, and world-class research programs. With 72% of undergraduate students receiving scholarships or financial aid, UNL offers a Big Ten education at great value. Farmers can make what seems impossible reality with a little hard work and ingenuity. They find solutions to reduce inputs and improve their yield. Valley Irrigation is no different. As the leader in irrigation technology, we deliver results and optimize your operation. Because when you have a vision for the future, you need the people that can make it possible by your side. Expect what's next.